Are we looking at a culture in dire straits? Even a culture, as the Apostle Paul would say, given over. And I'm keeping that as an open possibility. And so the moral crusade for sexual egalitarianism, which I think is the tip of the sphere, is running rough, roughshod over the very notion of the image of God. And this revolution is taking place within a single generation. And the culture is falling apart morally. There's an escapee from Stalinist Russia, Piterim Sorokin, the first essential mark of civilization requires that men take responsibility for their offspring. <laughs> How are we doing on that level? Of course, this is all being undermined by this movement for sexual equality. Homosexuality was first presented following the 60s Cultural Revolution as one of the issues of individual civil rights that wouldn't harm anybody. Just lets us have our rights. But we've looked at queer theory during these lectures. And just recently, the federal government appointed Kai Feldblum, a lesbian intellectual, proposed to the Senate as non-controversial by President Obama to write the ENDA, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act which will determine how uh, businesses can employ people and what criteria shall be used. And this woman, Kai Feldblum, promised to use the power of the federal government to promote every type of relationship as equal to traditional marriage, including polyamorous relationships, that is, three or more people united in a sexual relationship. Is this a situation where everyone wins with the various positions being respected? Well, you know that a spoonful of deadly poison changes the water supply for everybody. Uh, one transgender teenage boy entering the girls' bathrooms with the full support of the school's administration changes the character of bathroom breaks for everybody. It's not just his rights that suddenly get uh, respected, it's that other rights are refused. So b by redefining marriage as the union of any two people, and eventually we will see this extended to any number of people, the belief in exclusive heterosexual monogamy is repudiated by federal law, and the normativity of pansexuality is affirmed by the highest laws of the land. So not only is toleration demanded, but also silence. We are required to give implicit agreement that sexuality is indeed multiform and should be open to everybody, including children. And so we see the invasion of the schools. The brainwashing of the next generation is underway. In the subtle introduction, both of Eastern spirituality and of what we call pansexuality. This is really a recruitment technique for the changing of the minds of the next generation of citizens who are sort of forced to believe that any sexuality is okay, you see. It's not that we keep in these little boxes. If you don't accept that, you are actually outside the law you are discriminating, and that can be punished. So it's not like it was said that just give us our rights and we'll take care of ourselves. It's now the imposition of this worldview on everybody. The uh, European Parliament demanded recently the passage of abortion as a human right, for certain humans anyway, and the children aged four to six should be informed about early childhood masturbation, same-sex relationships, and respect for those, those different lifestyles and concepts. Children as low as primary school need, says one activist, need accurate, impartial, non-judgmental information about heterosexuality, homosexuality, and bisexuality. 
What does non-judgmentalism mean and impartiality, but a judgment and a partial statement against heterosexual norm normativity and a massive affirmation of pansexuality? So nothing is non-judgmental. I was reading a book recently by an Old Testament scholar, John Oswalt, O-S-W-A-L-T, the Bible among the myths. He's talking about the ancient world and how the Bible is so different from the pagan myths. And in a section entitled Denial of Boundaries, which is what he says ancient paganism affirmed, he says, the removal of boundaries between realms human and gods, gods and nature, give rise to the immoral behaviors, occult prostitution, incest, homosexuality of the ancient world, but that they are not an, an unfortunate aberration or primitive behavior. They are theological statements, necessary expressions of the pagan worldview of which they are part. Isn't that interesting? That study of ancient paganism reveals that these sexual extremist expressions are not simply aberrations, but are essential to the very notion of paganism itself. And what are we seeing today? This uh, denial of boundaries, that is that things are separate, is going on at an incredible speed. You know, this whole politics of equality you can give two meanings to that. Um, yeah, we all need to have equal rights. And yet that can very quickly become the leveling of all distinctions. And an example that came to me yesterday was uh, in the Oklahoma State Capitol where the um, atheists or occultists are demanding that uh, Next to the Ten Commandments is placed a statue of Baphomet, who is the Satanist's god, who is a male and female goat. And so you have equality here, you see, which really is an expression of the joining of the opposites. You, you relativize, actually, with much of this equality. You relativize all notions of morality. And you find yourself, you see, in a totally immoral culture. In the name of the rights of some, you have relativized everything. And you are discriminatory when you affirm your views of things, and you must be silent. And that's really, I think, where we're going. And you've seen it on numerous occasions in the last few years. I like to call this program the elimination of the binary the binary being two-ness. And I didn't make this up myself. I take the term elimination of the binary from homosexual leaders. Uh, two lesbians wrote an article, can we put an end to the gender binary? Because there is no one way a person should be. But this is happening, it seems to me, at all crucial levels of our present society. In terms of epistemology, the theory of knowledge, according to postmodernism, distinctions between true and false must be abandoned as socially constructed illusions. So at the philosophical level, we're getting rid of the binary of true and false. In terms of science, the human is being joyously uh, celebrated as co-creator of the cosmos. The binary of the creator and the creature is being eliminated. Uh, we're seeing the elimination of the binary of the distinction between animals and humans. As the uh, TV program Animal Planet says, animals are persons too. And a, uh, in New York State, Tommy, a 26-year-old chimp, is recognized as a cognitively complex, autonomous legal person. The binary of animals and humans is going away. In politics, the removal of the political binary, the totalitarian state, says one scholar, aims at obliterating all distinctions between 
itself and its citizenry, controlling every aspect of organized life. As somebody said, a left-wing person recently, your children belong to us. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> That's where our politics wants to take us. Removal of the religious binary, we have seen it in previous lectures, where the non-dogmatic spirituality of Hinduism is fiercely defended, and the notion of Advaita, not too, is proposed as the spiritual way forward. The destruction of the binary in spirituality between us and God is collapsed, and the future is non-dual, Advaita. Thus we find the proposing of yoga in the schools and Buddhist mindfulness as ways of suppling up the culture to open its mind to this non-dual way of thinking. In theology, of course, liberalism has always tried to eliminate the binary view of God. Ex-Bishop John Shelby Spong says, theism is dead, God separate from the creation. That's where the Episcopal Church was going. But the emergent church also affirms the work of Diana Butler Bass, I'll talk about her later, as a welcomed spiritual awakening, <clears throat> who, her name is Diana Butler Bass, defines God in less dualistic terms. How do you get less dualistic? I'm not sure. And the praying to God our mother, the nourishing spirit of Mother Earth is the future of Christianity. And she is endorsed by a number of emergent church leaders. The binary of Christian uniqueness is being taken away. Mainline Protestant communities are facing the shift towards religious pluralism, the triumph of multiculturalism, of progressive Christianity, where we hear the announcement of the arrival of religionless Christianity, shorn of any creeds, and dogmas, any notion of the Bible as unique and inspired, but a faith borne along by the breath of undefined spirit. And that the next stage in the Christian faith is interfaith. In eschatology, we're losing the binary of the ultimate distinction of heaven and hell. Sinners in the hands of an angry God is a joke for the modern mind. Alas, when you get rid of that, though, there is no ultimate justice, no final accountability with regard to real evil. Can you see what that does? Hitler is in heaven. He was not guilty of crimes, but of mistakes. And so the very nature of the uh, judgments that God alone can use are eliminated with the rejection of heaven and hell. Obviously, the rejection of the binary of sexuality and gender leads the dance as we see the attack upon gender. In Sweden, they now develop gender-neutral pronouns because we can't stand affirming male or female. I mentioned earlier M and F is disappearing from official documents. A New York Times article in 2012 said, entitled, Can a Boy Wear a Skirt to School? And this was proposed as a, the forward-looking cohort of the population for whom gender fluidity is a creative playing field. You see, the rising generation has been so brainwashed into thinking that gender distinctions have to go. That's the future. And the theological basis, of course, is the joining of the opposites, which is essential to a pagan worldview of oneism. Our world is very similar to that of Paul's time, and we have to face the reality that perhaps what reigned in Rome is coming back. The Apostle Paul concludes, as he looks at the Roman Empire, for this reason God gave them over to dishonorable passions and to a debased mind to do, what, to do what ought not to be done. Is our culture at this stage, the stage of being given over? 
Alas, because of the intimidation factor, a number of Christians are tempted to give in. Let's not do that.